if we come across one that you already know, I won't torture you for long. It's going to be short, um, but you might learn about a technique to go with that one. So um, I'm going to start off with some real simple ones. So last week, uh, I think it was this group last week, I was talking about tearing, how when, when you're fussy tearing, if you tear from the back rather than the front. So I took a calendar page. And so when you're tearing, you're going to notice if I'm carrying out this barrel with the flowers, if I tear the pick from the picture back, I'm going to end up with the same color that's on the picture. There's no difference. But if I tear from the back forward, you're going to start seeing the white, okay. the white around it. Can you see okay. the white feather edge? Uh -huh. it, gives, it gives you a feather edge. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it makes it a little, it makes it interesting. At least I think so. So I'm just going to quickly tear this one. And then I'm going to show you the difference between one that's torn and, and one from the back forward and one that's torn the opposite way. And you're going to see um, they both have somewhat of a feather edge, but one has the white feather edge and one is going to have the other feather edge. So you can see here, this side is just, it's torn, but you see no color. This side, you see the white, see the white feather edge. And I like tearing. I think tearing makes things more interesting than just cut out. Now, when we do soul collage, we, we do cut out a lot of things because we want them to blend more. But if you're doing a regular collage and you don't want it to, one thing to blend into the other, you want a little separation, then I like to do the, the torn edge. So that is one. And the next thing, let's see. Um, I also mentioned this last week. If you take a sheet of paper and you wanna fold it in half and you want all the corners to stay matched because we start out with the corners match, but then many times we just zip across and then your corners end up not being matched. So if you put your finger in the middle and then you slide out and then you slide out, that will keep your corners matched. So you'll have a, a perfectly uh, folded piece of paper. And especially if you're, if you're into bookmaking like um, Carrie and I, you know, it's important to keep those, those corners nice and neat because when you're done with your book, you want it to look somewhat professional. Okay. Um, oh, another thing I wanted to show you is, and I know I've shown this to some of you before, but I'm not sure who, how many of you saw it. So if, you, uh, if you're using a glue stick, and many times I'm just going to take this scrap piece here that I had, and if I'm going to glue this onto this sheet, and I get glue all over this side. Now I need to glue the other side. So if I hold the glued side with my cap, I can now glue the remainder without it touching my finger. And when I lift it up, it's holding it for me. So I can grab it by the edge and I can take it and I can glue it on there. And I have got, I've gotten no glue on my, on my fingers whatsoever. So use that cap. Okay, let's see. Oh, um, well, I can, I can use this very same one. No, I can't. Not with a glue stick. If you, if you take, if you're taping something down, you can use, you know, double stick tape. I'm going to just use this little tape runner. If I run tape across here and then I place this down and it's in the wrong position. If you just pull it up, you're going to tear the back paper. But if you huff on it, it's called huffing. And, and if huffing isn't in the dictionary, um, paper crafters use it all the time. If you just huff on it. No way. Yeah. Comes off. It, it actually, your breath is warm enough to loosen up that glue. And it just made a little tiny mark on the paper. But if you were just repositioning it, you're going to cover that anyways. And then it's still, it's still good to use. So that's, that's huffing. 
Not like when you go up and down stairs and you're hopping. <laughs> <laughs> so, <friends> yes. <laughs> for those of you who um, do any kind of rubber stamping or you're interested in making um, any kind of um, any kind of stencils, um, a good way, uh, you know, to, to make a stencil, you've got to either sketch something or you need to stamp it. So it, I'm going to show you a couple that I purchased. But if you take a rubber stamp and you stamp your image down onto a piece of cardstock, then you take that piece of cardstock and very carefully cut it out, you'll have a stencil. Now you want to save the center part because the center part is your mask. So now I'm going to, and I didn't grab color, I didn't grab colors that I would normally use. I grabbed colors that I thought would show up good and would, would be a nice contrast. And, and when you're stamping, I think most of you probably know, go down with the stamp pad onto the rubber stamp and you'll get better coverage. So when I stamp this, and hopefully this board is going to work good, I usually work on a hard table, but I'm just working on this. Okay, well, it came out pretty good. So if you were to, if you, if you have a, any rubber stamps and you have something like this one's a birdcage, it could be a jar, it could be anything that something would normally be inside of, anything you stamp on here in a lighter color will look like it's inside. So if I, and, and unfortunately I didn't, let's see, I've got a paisley here. Let me stamp a paisley. I wish I had, had thought to bring a bird or something. But if I stamp in this lighter color, which is an orange, it's going to look like it's in this bird cage. And hopefully, it, hopefully it's gonna look that way. See how it looks like it's inside the bird cage? Cool. Yeah. So like I've got one that looks like a mayonnaise jar. Um, and yeah, and you know, you could, I could put a little person in there. I could put a bird in there. I could put anything in there. It looks like it's inside. Now, what I do with my rubber stamps is I just wipe them off on a towel. But if you're someone who wants your rubber stamps to be totally clean, there are different pads that you can buy. Now, this one I did purchase years ago, and it's a stamp cleaning, a stamp cleaning pad. But what it basically is, is when you go to the hardware store into the paint department and you're get you're buying those edgers and they're kind of flat with a little handle, and they have one of these that slides into it, and then you just go along the edge of your, your ceiling with it. All you have to do is buy one of these in the hardware store they cost about the same price, whether you get it in the hardware store or you get one special so-called for stamping. But these you wet and I keep mine in a box and I just put a little bit of water in the box when I'm working and then you can just scrub your pad and it totally will keep it clean. And I do that once in a while, but usually I, I'm just using, using a rag to wipe them off. And, um, and I usually use um, the same color inks on, like usually I use black on here. If you're multi-stamping, and let's say um, you were stamping this paisley and you were you're gonna stamp it in orange and you're gonna stamp it in blue and you're gonna stamp it in black, just start with your lightest color. And as long as you start with your lightest color and say you stamp the orange one, give it a wipe, you can go right into the deeper blue one give it a wipe, then you can go into the black one. It's in that way, you're going into the darker, darker, darker colors. So um, the lighter colors won't do anything to your, to your stamp pad. Um, let's see here, what is next? Um, okay, so now I wanna show you about the stencils. So I printed this birdcage. Now, if I wanted to put, say, a color in the background, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some brushes. There are different <laughs> brushes for brushing. These, these are actually makeup brushes, but 
crafters started using them about four years ago for stencils. They come in all different sizes and, and they're very inexpensive, like $15 per set of 10. Then you've got your traditional little pouncer, which has a little removable foam pad. And the good old makeup brush that are makeup sponge. These work great. These really work great. And after you use them for one color, you can just cut it off and just keep using it until it gets to the point where you can't hold it anymore. So if I wanted to color in that background because I didn't color it in first, all I would do is I would take my stencil and I would put it over there. Let me grab my washi tape. Normally I have a, a magnetic board that I put this on. But if not, I use my, my washi tape to hold it in place. You, of course, if this was flat on a table, you could spread your fingers out and, and hold it with that. But if it moves, then you ruin the whole thing. So, okay, I'll just do two for now. I'm going to take my ink pad. Now, you don't wanna take one of these and just mush it into your ink pad. These will suck up the ink. So what you do, and this is another word you may not, you may know, smush it. You want to smush it onto an acrylic block. And these are acrylic blocks that people use for cling stamps. So when you smush it, you end up with a lot of ink on there. I don't know if you can see that, but there's quite a bit of, quite a bit of ink on there. So then from there, I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to flip it around, hmm. and then I'll go go on to the background. Little down there. And if you if you lift it and the color's not dark enough for you, you can you can go again. Keep going until it gets as dark as you want. So see it's put some color, I don't know if you can see that, but it's put color in the background. Mm -hmm. So it's it's darker now. It's no longer that white background. Now, you've done that, but you don't have anything around the rest of it. Now, if this was a greeting card, you might want to leave it white. But if it was something else, you may want that background to be colored. So that's where you use your mask. So if you take your mask, put your mask over it. Now, let's make believe I have a different color because you wouldn't be doing this all in the... You, I would have like a deeper orange or maybe a yellow or, or something. So if you hold the mask on there, you can now go around. And you have to be careful of little pieces like that one sticking out because I just bent it. Now, if you notice, see that see that dark spot? That's where I first went on to went on to the, the paper. To avoid that, what you want to do is you want to, after you get it loaded, take a piece of scrap paper, rub a little off and then go off of the mask, off of the mask onto the paper. And you're gonna, as you notice, there's no big round dark spot. So that way you're adding color to the background and you can keep adding and keep adding until it gets as dark as you want it. Okay, I'm just gonna close these ink pads before I have a terrible accident. And if you've never seen ink pads like these with the slides, I have a couple of them. They're from um, Stampin' Up. And they're kind of nice because they, um, they close. They close very nicely. And they close tight and they're, they're a really juicy ink pad. Not all ink pads um, have a lot of ink on them. So when I first started this, I had smushed onto the, um, I had smushed onto the block. So now there's a lot of ink left there. Can you see that? There's quite a bit of ink. You don't have to waste that. So now I can take my, my brush with a little bit of water in it on it, and I can use this like a watercolor. And a lot of the, um, the, make, the card makers and the crafters, when they're doing their lessons, they don't have watercolor paints. They just use their ink pads, smushing it on. And then I can take this, and I could color in, you know, whatever I want. And as you can see, I just colored that right in like if it was watercolor. And if I wanted to, I could, you know, add 
add like a tabletop, you know, whatever, whatever I want. So I'm mm -hmm. sorry, it's not a little clearer. I can see that it's not showing up the greatest. Okay. And another thing um, that quite a few people do is they'll have just an old book. And when they're done stamping, they'll take their stamp and they'll stamp off onto there. Or they'll, they'll take their brush and they'll clean their brush on, on something like this. And, if it, and, and sometimes it turns out nasty and you throw it away. Sometimes it turns out really good and it's the start of a background. <laughs> if you have, if you have um, ink sprays, if any, I, know, uh, I know a couple of you use ink sprays. And if you don't know this already, if you have an ink spray, like this is a mica spray. Um, this one is a shimmer spray. So they've got that little shiny stuff in there and they have to be shaken up. Store them sideways. If you store them sideways, it's much quicker to, to mix them up because everything settles on one side. Rather than it all being gunked down, gunked down the bottom, it's spread out through the side of the bottle. And you can shake it up really quickly by keeping them stored on their side. All righty. Let's, let's get rid of our birdcage. And... Okay, we did that part. Did that. Okay, um, I'm going to talk now about, I know, I'm not sure if, our, if Erica, is she here today? If Erica is here, then she'll like this. Um, uh, no, she's not. She she's doesn't not. come to Soul Collage, but, oh, but she, we can uh, tell her. We can didn't tell she her come about once her. or twice? She's never come? Oh, okay. She, well, she did before you started. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to take a stencil here, and I'm hoping you can see that. There you go. So we've got a stencil, and I'm going to show you, if you have stencils, you can do stencil shifting, whether it's a shifter stencil or not. This is not a shifter stencil. So I can take, I can take my, my pad here, and I'm going to, this is my, this one is specifically for orange, so I've got to stick with orange, otherwise I'd do a darker color. And you go in, you go in a circular motion with these. Okay, so now I have my ink. And I'm going to do some on the bottom. I'm going to get that design going. And I'm going to get the design on the top going too. Now, again, because I went straight to the stencil, the center part's going to have a little darker circle than the rest. Now, on the top one, if I don't want that to happen, what I do is I start off to the side and then I go on to the stencil. And it left the majority of the ink there so that I don't have a big, a big blotch mark. Okay, so now, now we've got that all stenciled. If we take this, and I'm, I'm going to just turn around here a little, I'm going to shift this. So instead of matching it up on the same exact line, I'm going to shift it over and I'm gonna put the stars on the dots. There we go. Now you could you could now go over it with a, a different color or you could go over it with the same color. I'm gonna go over with the same color because it's gonna darken it and then it's gonna give it a little dimension. Right around. So when I lift that, can you see, this may not show because I use, can you see the, the darker dots in the center of the stars? Yes. Yeah. You can. That's okay. Very pretty. Yeah. So you can do it in, in different colors. You can do it all different ways. So now on the bottom one, on this bottom one, I'm going to shift that over a little too. And I'm going to shift that just, just a little because I want it to just have a little shadow to it. Let's see, where are we? There we are. Okay, there we go. So I shifted it just, just a, a smidgen, just to give it a little shadow 
And did I, now I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna use the sponge now because I want to, I want to put a little green in there. I want the, the next part to be green so it really shows up. Again, now I just broke the rule, didn't I, with this? I went straight into the ink pads with, with these. So I sucked up a lot of, a lot of ink. So I, I just wasted some ink, but anyways. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over this one with the green. And I'm going in a circular motion. Okay. And when you take it off, can you see that? Yeah. It didn't come out the neatest, but it, it has a little bit of a, a shadow or a second tone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wish I had a setup where I could be down on a table. If I, if I did, <laughs> I'd be able to see more of what I'm doing. And as far as stencils go, um, if you're fussy about your stencils and you want to perfectly clean, just pick up a, a dollar store um, dish pan, have, have it with like an inch of water next to you. You can drop your stencils in. They'll stay nice and wet and um, you can clean them later. But what I do is I just take, I just take a cloth, which is on my knee. I just wipe them off and it will take off. It will take off quite a bit of the ink and it leaves them, it leaves them stained, but you could always clean them off later, soak them and clean them off later if you want. But as you see, it takes off, it takes off quite a bit of it. So it's not going to cake up in the holes or, or ruin the design later on. Okay. Let's see here. We did snap shifting, did that. Okay. So um, I think it was this class last week. And now this is the Chippendales portion of the show. I'm getting hot. <laughs> <laughs> you got your dollar bills ready, ladies. Come on. <laughs> you need music. Right. I've got innocent cats in the room, so I won't go any further. <laughs> so I'm just going to close these ink pads before I end up putting my elbow in it and ruining my shirt. And if you notice, I have my old gloves on today because I was going to be working with ink and I didn't want to take a chance of getting my nice new ones uh, all messed up. Okay, um, if you're someone who does printing, whether it be rubber stamping or whether it be with a with some type of, of printing block, and you, what's great is to have a little padding on the table. These doggy, these doggy pee pee pads, they are wonderful because they're 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 pretty thin, but they've got that cushion to them. And you know, just use it on the plastic side. Just use it on your plastic side. Um, if you do print, if you do print with a um, with printing block or rubber stamps, sometimes rubber stamps like this one here, you saw when I printed with it, um, because I wasn't using padding, there was a portion at the bottom. I don't know where I, there it is. There was this portion at the bottom here where it it left kind of a white section. It didn't print real well. If I had had this pad under it, it would have printed well. So. Um, but there's another way to do it. If you, if you have a larger stamp like this, you can take your paper and lay your paper over the stamp. And then you can either use your, your fingers or your palm to smooth it while holding it in place. Don't let it move. Or you can use a baron. And a baron is just a flat, a flat tool and that will catch every piece too so that it prints well. And, and it's the same thing, same thing with printing blocks. Same exact way. It's these you always want to print um, this way with the paper over it, smoothing it to get every every bit because it's very hard to um, get every every detail the other way. Um, get rid of my pee pee pad. All right, washi tape. I think it was this group that we were talking about washi tape last time. Unless it was the Friday group, I get confused. But there were some people who, us. What, what was that? That was us. Mm -hmm. That was us. Okay, good. There were some people that weren't familiar with washi tape. So washi tape comes in all different sizes, all different designs. Um, the iPad, 
this one here has has vintage mm -hmm. vintage little ads on it um this one has keys this one's from a lady um on etsy who sells all kinds of beautiful um japanese washi tapes these um are um diane rivoli on um ranger ranger brand so with washi tape if you were to take uh, let me grab something here here we go okay so when you washi tape is a low tack thin tape and it's it's not like the not like the blue tape for painting that that's that will grab your paper washi tape in most cases will not grab your paper so if you put a piece of washi tape on as a decoration on something and it's not in the right place, you can peel it off. Or like when you saw me um, stenciling, I held things down with washi tape. And if that was, say, a card that I had to stencil on, I could peel this up and it wouldn't damage the surface of my card. But yet, if once you get it in place, let's say you are using it for decorating, all you have to do is take your fingernail, take the back of a spoon, take a, um, a spoon handle or a, some type of bone folder or scraper. And if you scrape it, that washi tape, it's gonna become stuck. It's really gonna stick to that, to that piece. If I was to try to take this up now, it's gonna grab some surface of my paper. So it's down there well. And if you, if you ever decorate the back of an envelope, like um, you know how sometimes we put extra tape on the back of the envelope, make sure it doesn't open. If you did that with washi tape, you definitely mm -hmm. want to use a bone folder or your fingernail or something and adhere it well. And the same thing on a collage. You don't want your collage to start coming apart. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think I just went fast and I think I, I think I might be done. We might have time for, uh, for making some collages. I think I did, I think I did everything. Well, those are very helpful hints, Dave. Thank you. Yeah, I did everything. Yeah, those so. are great. That's so wonderful. I, I that, Do I you have that... your own YouTube channel? You're so professional at it. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, if you're excellent. The, if you're I had the proper teacher. equipment, I might do that and make some money on YouTube. Well so. done. So.